In this video, we're going to talk about how to choose specific IB subjects. Do you think about you're running from? There will be two parts to this series. In the first part, it will be mainly general recommendations on how to choose subjects. And in the second part, we'll dive into specifically to each group. How do we choose subjects for each group? So first, we're going to talk about the rules for choosing IB subjects. In IB, they split their subjects into six different groups. On the six mentioned groups, you have to choose one subject from each group. However, you can do not choose a subject in group six and choose another subject in group one, two, three, or four, and not five because you cannot do two different mathematic courses. Now we're going to talk about some of the all-purpose subjects. I define all-purpose subjects as subjects that are commonly required as a prerequisite that the university often recognizes. So this means subjects that are more traditional. So for instance, in the sciences group, it would be chemistry, biology, and physics, rather than innovative subjects like ESS, sports sciences, and design technology. If you're not sure what you want to study for university, it's actually better if you choose these all-purpose subjects because it really opens up the different pathways. Some of the all-purpose subjects, if you want to go into math, science-based subject, but you're not sure which route yet, some of the all-purpose subjects include math HL and chemistry HL. And I say chemistry and math HL obviously because among all the sciences, they do require math even for biology and chemistry HL because I applied to the UK and I noticed that for some of the more bio-related subjects, for example, even biology, biological sciences, you can totally get into the course without even doing biology. What I noticed is that chemistry is often the all-purpose subject in the science-based subject. Every year, my chemistry teacher gets a lot of requests for teacher recommendations because chemistry is such an important subject. For humanities subjects, some of the all-purpose subjects are, for instance, English A Literature or English A Language and Literature at HL and History at HL. So for example, if you're doing law, even though there isn't a law course in IB, but in law, some of the prerequisites include English A at HL and History at HL. Some very strong students are even able to take the bilingual diploma. And so by taking these all-purpose subjects, you don't limit your path to only studying one type of sciences or or one type of um, you know language courses so you are allowed to have more option in terms of university applications So next, I'll introduce something called soft subjects. To define this, soft subjects are basically subjects that are often not prerequisites for a specific course. And because in the IB, you have to choose six courses in total. So there are some, some subjects where um, you have to take even though it's not a requirement for your university. In terms of these soft subjects, these are often innovative subjects that you will notice that are usually not included in university prerequisites. So in this includes subjects like business, psychology, ESS, geography, and design technology, and so on. So there's many other examples. So even though some of these subjects mentioned are not a prerequisite, they do aid the student in uh, preparing for a university course. So for instance, some of the subjects that uh, are not prerequisite, but they do help you in terms of understanding more on the course and that you might be studying in university includes, for instance, economics, psychology, religious studies, music, government and politics, art and philosophy. And what I said here is from um, an official account from uh, Wei Xing, so I'll include a link to that. With these two types of subjects I mentioned, it is definitely more important to prioritize all-purpose subjects over these type of soft subjects. And to illustrate that, I want to provide an example. So for instance, if you want to study sport and exercise medical sciences at King's College London, this is just an example. Um, if we look at the requirements here, they say 34 points in total, including 655 at a higher level with higher level subjects in two of biology, physics, chemistry, psychology, sports, exercise, and health science, which is the sports science program in IB, or mathematics. So it would make sense that if you want to do sports science, for example, at King's College London, that you do take sports science in the IB. However, you have to consider what if you decide to um, switch your path sometime in year two. And in that case, there's no way 
back and no way to change your subject anymore. So for instance, if the student at first decides to study uh, sports sciences, but then later decide to switch to apply to biomedical sciences, in this case, from the King's College London Biomedical Sciences page, they only accept chemistry and bio at HL. So they said including a 655 at higher level with HL chemistry and HL biology and with a total score of at least 35. So in this case, you can see that taking bio and chemistry HL is a much conservative approach as compared to taking sports sciences and biology HL because by taking sports sciences and biology HL or sports sciences and chemistry HL, for example, you are only able to apply to the sports sciences because biomedical sciences do not accept sports sciences. So that's why it's important to prioritize those all-purpose subjects and all those um, su subjects that are in a way more valuable and choose them over the soft, soft subjects that you think are easier or that are more compatible to your wanted major. And this is only an example. It's not always the case like this, but this is an example. So some people, for example, if they really want to take sports sciences, a more conservative approach is to take chemistry HL, sports sciences HL, and math HL. Because even though it's not mentioned here, but from my experience of applying to UK to applying to science subjects in the UK, I noticed that many of them, they do uh, accept math HL. So in this case, if you at least have chemistry and math HL, it opens up your option. So I have a friend who wants to do sports sciences, but he only has biology HL. And for chemistry and math, he took both of them as SL courses. And what he noticed in the university application process is that some colleges and universities don't accept his subject combination. And that really limits down the number of universities he can apply to. Of course, it's important to look at the university's requirement because what I said just now is only applicable to the UK and only applicable to some majors and some schools. So it's very important to check the university's requirement beforehand, even before you start doing IB. Just get a general idea about what the course requirements are from the universities where you want to go to it. So next aspect I want to talk about is uh, whether or not you should take four higher levels. I personally took four higher levels. So my four hi higher levels were biology, chemistry, psychology, and Chinese Bs. The reason why I took four higher levels is that I'm pretty fluent in Chinese. So Chinese B HL is considered an easier HL for me. So technically I'm almost like only taking three HLs, but I decided to get take it at four because it feels a bit unethical to take Chinese B SL at my level, so I still took Chinese B HL. So my prerequisites are biology and chemistry HL, but I decided to take psychology HL because I wanted to do my extended essay, my EE, in psychology. So I thought it would be better to take psychology as an HL subject so that I could get a more in-depth knowledge in that subject to be able to write a good EE. So if you're not sure whether or not you should take four higher levels, I would suggest taking uh, four higher levels at the beginning of IB and then see if you can manage with the workload. And to take four higher levels, you really need a very good time management because IB is a very um, intense course. And by taking four higher levels, you need to learn more co content than what is required. So it's very important that you have the time management to be able to cope with such large amount of workload. As you can see, my four higher levels, if we don't count Chinese B, all the other three higher levels like biology, um, chemistry, and psychology are mainly content-based compared to math, for example, which is more skill-based, math and English, which is more skill-based. So this means that I need to spend more time to learn the content, learn and memorize the content compared to other people. If you're a very hardworking person and you think that you're able to spend such large amount of time into learning the content and memorizing it, then go ahead, take four HLs. I think you can do it. But you just need to make sure that you do have the time management. I have friends who took uh, five HLs at the beginning and then many of them for math, analysis and approaches they had to drop to SL because they find the curriculum too difficult and this really saved them in terms of having to raise another subject to SL on the second year of IB. So I think if you think you can take four HLs or you're not sure just take it at the beginning first and then if you think you can't do it just drop it.
But what I need to say is that I don't think it helped me as much in terms of my university applications because the first thing universities look at is still your um, final like total predicted score. So if you take four HLs but then get a two, a three, or a four on one of the HLs, it's not going to look good in terms of your final predicted score. And I don't think the university treated me uh, as an applicant differently simply because I took four HLs. So I, I would say just do it at your own risk, but it's definitely not a requirement. If you want to challenge yourself, sure. But some people say like t by taking four HLs, the university can see how you like to undertake challenges and things like that. But these are very qualitative and very vague. And I don't think there's a way to like measure whether or not they did that. So that was never a reason why I took four HLs. And another thing I want to say is that you'll notice that the pressure for taking four HLs only comes towards the end of the second year of IB because that's when you finish up the content and sometimes like HL com content comes after SL content and when you're in the midst of like working on all the IAs. So for me, I really f felt the, the four HL pressure in sometime between February or March in my second year of IB, like so which is one or two months before the exam. And the reason for that is because um, at that point, psychology SL, they already finished all the content and we're moving into HL content. But at the same time, I'm working on my IAs and my TOK essay and still learning the content for other subjects. So at that point, I really do envy the SL students for finishing. And so I sometimes really do think to myself, like, you didn't have to take this subject. Like, what, why are you undertaking such large amount of pressure at this point? In my school, like previously, there are students who dropped to three HLs around that time, but I just pushed myself through it because I didn't want to give up. So in, just in general, I think if you're not sure, just take it at first and then like you'll see the amount of effort you need to put into learning every subject and then you will start developing a time management skill. If at that point you think it's too much work and you feel overwhelmed, just drop it. This is definitely a big commitment and you do need to talk to your subject teachers and your IB coordinator or university counselor to be able to make that decision. Another common question is like which subjects should I take as a higher level subject? And so there's two things to consider in this case. So firstly, it's uh, definitely your university prerequisite requirements. But if you're taking four HLs like me and you're deciding whether or not you want to take something as HL. So there's some things to consider. So firstly, for example, if, if you're doing your EE in that subject, so for example, for me, I wanted to do my EE in psychology. So I just took that subject as a psychology so that I can learn more about it. And another thing to consider is if you do take a certain subject as HL, is the content harder or is it just more content that you need to put in more time to study the content? So for instance, what I noticed is that for chemistry at HL, you just learn twice the amount of content and not harder content. So I never had trouble learning uh, chemistry HL content because for me, I think it's as easy to comprehend as SL topics, but I just need to put in more time to learn the HL topics. And however, for biology, for example, I do notice that the HL content are actually requires more conceptual understanding than SL content. So. If you're not a very like bio person, like you don't understand like a specific subject as easily, it's better to take it as SL content. But if the course at HL level is just more content, and if you think that you can put in the amount of time required to study for that, then I think taking that subject at a higher level wouldn't be a problem. So another aspect I want to address is a bilingual diploma. Do you have to take a bilingual diploma and how does it help in your university application? So for IB, there's two different ways to get a bilingual diploma. So the most direct way is you take two language A's. I took English A language and literature at SL and I took Chinese B HL. So in this case, if I want a bilingual diploma, I can do English A SL and Chinese A SL. And I would just directly get a bilingual diploma for Chinese and English. And another way to take um, a bilingual diploma is to is to do one of the other subjects so group uh, three 
or four in another language. So students who gain a three or higher in studies in language and literature and a three or higher in individuals and societies, which is group three or science subject group four, completed in a different language will receive a bilingual diploma. So to provide an example of this, so for instance, if I stuck with English ASL and Chinese VHL, but I decided to do, for example, my psychology in Chinese, I would still get a bilingual diploma. In my opinion, um, unless if you're going for more like language based subjects like law, for example, it's not really necessary to get a bilingual diploma. So for me, I'm going for a science subject. I applied for biomedical sciences for uni and I just decided to not take a bilingual diploma because um, I don't think it'll help me in terms of my studies in university and my course and it will add a lot of work because Chinese ASL is just difficult like very difficult much more difficult compared to English ASL so I decided to take the easier route and just like not take two language A's I know that IB is getting more strict on whether or not you can drop a language A to a language B HL because it appears that a lot of students are doing that so for instance um, some people used to for example take Chinese A but then they decided to drop to Chinese B HL um, because it's easier this is why for Chinese B HL the course um, the grade boundary is super high so for instance to get a 7 in reading comprehension the boundary is like 92 or 93 percent and it's the same for instance like oral um, and your IO so that's why IB is regulating that I know for law schools they're adding more rules as to what subjects you can take at a Chinese BHL level so I know for instance for my school once you take Chinese A you're not allowed for instance to drop to Chinese BHL so you have to be very careful with what you choose um, because there might be no way back so in my opinion undergoing all the trouble just to get a bilingual diploma is not worth it so I just decided to not take the bilingual diploma but if it really does help with your subject like if you plan to study law demonstrating your language ability is very important so in that case taking a bilingual diploma will really help in your university application. So that's the end of this video. In part two, we're going to dive more into the specific groups and recommendations on specific group subjects. I would give more detailed um, advice on whether or not to take the subjects that I have chosen. So I hope you find this video help helpful and please stay tuned for the next video for part two.